Yeah, welcome back to episode two. Andy VFR here, how are you doing? So just in case you haven't seen episode one yet, uh, I've had to take uh, Kramer into the local Kawasaki dealership, Cradley Kawasaki, where I brought it from, because I had a bit of an issue with it. Uh, I'd, I'd advise you to have a look at episode one to find out what the issue was. Um, so yeah, uh, I've organised a loan bike and uh, what they've given me brand new 73 plate Z650 RS so for those of you who don't really know what it is basically it's a Kawasaki's take on a on an old retro Z650 however this one's got the Z650 twin cylinder engine in it and I have to say so far I've only really ridden it back from the dealership um, but I'm not going to do like a you know one of those in-depth rides this is basically just a bimble on a loan bike and I'll just give you my basic initial thoughts Uh, I suppose the, the most notable thing to uh, that I've noticed is obviously I've been used to riding bigger, heavier bikes. Uh, obviously VFRs, hence the name Andy VFR, and I also Kramer. So this feels like as if you could literally pick it up and carry it down the road. Uh, I did have a quick check on to see because Kramer's about 250 kilos. This one is under 200 kilos. That's at 187, I think. So yeah, so this, it's a bit more vibey than I'm used to. But you know what? As I say, that's, as I say, that's part of its character. I suppose the thing about this bike is obviously they brought out the Z900 RS uh, quite a few years ago, can't remember now, was it 2018, something like that, uh, which obviously had the standard inline four engine, which made it super smooth. Uh, when this first, when this bike first came out, which was a couple of years ago, most people were up in arms that Kawasaki didn't do a four-cylinder engine for it to keep, you know, keep keep within the the, the retro styling. But you know what? As I say the styling is is pretty good. As I say I'll do a bit of a walk around later. Um, and show you what it looks like. I think I think the style the styling's okay actually. It's you know it reminds me of my youth of the uh, the Z six hundreds and the or oh, sorry the Z six fifties and the uh, the Z nine hundreds and the Z ones of the, of the of the time. So I think you know the styling's pretty spot on really. There's a few things I'd you know if it was my bike I'd change on it, but other than that. It's not a bad looking bike. Riding position is I've, I've got a bit of weight on me uh, on me wrists. But it's not, you know, it's not too much. Certainly compared with the more upright sport adventure style bikes. Where they're quite a bit up more upright and wider handlebars and what have you, but uh, but yeah, it's, it's not too bad. Obviously, it's a retro bike, so it's got no... Uh, oh, cross runner. Um, it's got no uh, fairings or anything like that fitted to it. So, yeah, you know, you are in in the full wind blast. And I hope it's not, it's not too noticeable on the bike. Uh, but yeah, it's not... Uh, it's not, you know, 
terrible. It, it could clean air. The seat itself is, uh, I suppose you could call it benchy. It's, uh, there's no real finesse to it. I mean, it's comfortable enough. It's nothing, you know. It's certainly not quite as, uh, I wouldn't want to necessarily ride on it all day. So, uh, is it a touring machine? Well, to be fair, you could tour on anything, can't you, these days? <coughs> but yeah, I think, you know, after probably about an hour, you'd, you'd want to get off and give your derriere a bit of a rest. Uh, but other than that, I'm saying, just, just being balloon along like this, it's, uh, it's not a bad seat at all. Suspension is fairly, uh, fairly box standard. I don't think there's anything, there's no real adjustments on it. Uh, you might be able to adjust the preload maybe with a C-spanner. Uh, but uh, again, we'll have, a, we'll have a look at that when, uh, when, I, do me, when I do me walk round. So anyway, yeah, back to the bike. My initial thoughts. Uh, yeah, as I say, it is it is a bit vibey, being a twin a twin cylinder bike. But as I say nothing too obtrusive, nothing too too bad. Yeah, fairly Kawasaki have done their usual good work on uh, on their engines. Their engines are pretty good. I think they're up there with with Honda and what have you. <coughs> Uh, yeah, as I say, because this is, as I say, it's only done 220 miles, this, uh, it done 204 when I picked it up, so I've got to, uh, I've got to treat it with a bit of respect, I can't, uh, I can't thrape it like you would a fully running bike, so I'm going to treat it with the the care it deserves because you never know they might sell this bike one day so it would be nice to know that the people who have borrowed it have looked after it let's see what this is like on a faster bit of road yeah when it's obviously it's not going to have the pick up speed. That's a bigger engine bike, but you know what, it's not bad. <coughs> that's, in, that's in sixth gear. So I'd say it's, you know, it's a good talky little engine. Well, I suppose it would be because it's a twin. So I think that's probably why they've put it up there. Why they've used that engine. Yeah, I'm doing, doing 60 miles, or oh, indicated 60 down here. And so the wind blast is not, you know, it's not particularly noticeable. Whether you could fit a fly screen on it or whatever, then I think that would probably spoil the looks of it. I know that they did, uh, I think they did the RS, the 900 as a cafe racer. I don't know whether that makes any difference with the little bikini fairing on it, but uh, but yeah, you know what? For a bike that would you know, be excellent for for commuting, because it's like, quite lightweight and and manoeuvrable. And yeah, for you know, a blast in the sunshine like this, ideal. For me personally, that's my opinion. Bat brake's good. Well, it's about as good as a bat brake can be. And so this is a particularly bumpy bit of road, so. But 
yeah, certainly picks up. In fifth gear again, so it certainly picks up nicely. It really does. it's like anything really so, uh, so yeah any any modern take on a on a, a retro bike it's always you're always going to be trying to compare it with what used to be around back in the day but then you know you've got all the you've got all the uh, the modern accoutrements good word isn't it, I love accoutrements, that you'd get to make life a little bit easier I suppose, because there's no doubt about it, you know, you had to work hard, you had to work hard at riding the older retro bikes, So I suppose in some respects, you know, it, it's it's a step forward, <coughs> in, you, know. you know. If you want a retro bike, then you go out and buy one, don't you? You go and buy it. A, you go out and buy one, and deal with all the foibles and niggles that those older bikes had. certainly as a modern take on a retro bike I think it works we're not far away from the calf now so um, and then once I've had me lunch I'll come back to you and uh, sum up well do the walk round and sum up with uh, my basic thoughts on the bike so uh, Keep watching don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button and obviously the notifications so at least then you'll know when I'm putting more videos on the channel and I'll uh, bid you farewell for now this has been Andy VFR on Bimble's Trips and Tours TTFN Right, welcome back to the channel. That's lunch done with. Very nice it was too. <coughs> well, I had my lunch. I had a phone call from uh, Crazy Kawasaki saying that uh, Kramer's been looked at and and they've done a few bits and pieces on it. Of course, they couldn't. They couldn't find. They couldn't uh, find any fault. Which, to be fair, it's quite intermittent. So I didn't think they would. To be honest. But uh, it sounds like that they've done everything they need to do, like check all the connections and clean up the connections and and check the continuity of all the. The, the neutral light switch um, and also the side stand switch uh, taking it out for a for a quick test ride um, well they took it out for a test ride first of all they couldn't find a fault they obviously then had it back in the workshop did all the checks on what I you know on what they needed to do um, and then took it out for another test ride and everything seems to be fine on it so So yeah, so hopefully, fingers crossed, that issue with the, uh, that I explained earlier, has been, has been sorted.
and I don't doubt that, it's, uh, that it hasn't because as I say they've checked everything, cleaned up all the connections, they said that the uh, the neutral switch is in an area underneath the engine where it gets, where it will get covered in water and grime or what have you so they said it wasn't a common problem but that's you know what they would check and and sort out so Yeah, to make it hustle a bit more, but going back to the bike anyway, my first impressions of it, um, it certainly pulls in sixth gear to do overtakes, but certainly you have to knock it down a cog or two just to make a quick overtake. Which I suppose is fairly standard really. To be fair, I had to do that quite a lot of my VFRs and what have you. Um, just to get it hustling a little bit uh, faster on quick overtakes and what have you. But anyway, but yeah. I'm suitably impressed to be honest. So far. Obviously I've got to take it back now. So I thought, well, I'll carry on with what I intended to do. And go back the long way or well, the slightly longer way, um, then I'll stop off uh, at a place where I know I can stop off and have a little walk around and show you what uh, show you what the Z650 looks like if you've not seen one in the flesh or if you have you can't remember what it looks like uh, so yeah so what I'll do is I'll Put a bit of naff music on for you, um, and then uh, I'll then pick up with you a bit later on in the ride when I park up and we can have a quick look around it. Okay, so cue the music. I hope you enjoyed that little tune. I'm assuming it's stopped now. Yeah, certainly the suspension on here is, is yeah, basic. It's nothing special. I mean, it's fairly neutral, to be honest. Anything bigger than a, uh, I don't know, a, a reasonable side pothole, you're going to feel it. So you do have to, uh, you do have to ride around them. Um, whereas, obviously, the Versys, at the end of the day, if you do happen to it, anything then it does tend to soak it up a lot more so Woo! tell you what it likes to pick up its petticoat and run with this I tell you when you get it in the lower gears and you uh, give it a bit of a, a blast up a nice bit of road so it's not lacking, I have to say. It's not lacking at all. However, what it does do is it encourages you to ride gently. You know, just have a... Like I do, I like to go out for a bimble. It's not urging you on to 
to go at walk factor six everywhere. If you want to have a yeah, bit of fun on it, I suppose you could do. This kind of soddy day riding. Anyway, I'm going to pull into this lay-by here and uh, give you a quick uh, a quick look round. Centre stand is quite a long way back. That's one thing you've got to be careful of on it. Okay. I think what I might do is I might take uh, my helmet off because it's quite warm out here. Get my helmet and gloves off and get me uh, get my phone out. I think and do this bit with the phone. Just like a professional YouTuber. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see how professional I am, shall we? <laughs> so, yeah, so... Uh, bear with. Right, so there she is. Uh, this is the, uh, I want to say, the Z650 RS. You can see it's in black. Nice bit of... Uh, the pinstripe in there and I do like these touches here with the with the race Kawasaki old school old styly yeah so she's looks the part I have to say looks the part and it's not uh, you know, from the front it's got LEDs at the front Work fine. I think the LEDs all round, so indicators, headlights, and what have you, all round. Yeah, by the way, tank bag doesn't come with it. I put that on so I could put all my accoutrements in. But yeah, it's not a bad looking bike. The seat is 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 pretty good, really, considering it's not too bad at all. Have a look and see. I think that that's, uh, that suspension in there is fairly basic. You could probably get a C spanner on the top end to alter the preload, but uh, the forks are just standard forks, upside down or anything like that. There's no adjustment on the forks. But I can see they're pretty standard. And the clocks, I do love these clocks, I have to say, they are nice. I think. Uh, they're not plastic affairs, though. they're a bit plasticky, but anyway. Yeah, there's that engine. Like I say, based on the, uh, the Z650. <coughs> so it's, uh, but yeah, it's a pokey little, pokey little thing, it really is. Let's just have a look at the switch gear again. So yeah, so you've got the switch gear here, fairly basic. With your indicators, form, so it's got a uh, habit line, so it's interesting. Main beam and main beam and dips. Around here is the uh, the flasher with your pass button. Um, and on here, this one here, I presume is where you can actually alter, alter the uh, settings on the LED. I'll just put that on. Sweepy action of the, 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 the speedo, and what have you. Can't really see that because the sun's in the way. I'll try and get a bit of shade if you see that. Yeah, it's uh, and so on. There's the other handlebar again. Fairly basic switches, kill switch, box the start button. Yeah, as I say, it's, it's not the cleanest of bikes, but it's got a really nice sort of metal flake in the paintwork. I'll have a quick shifter on it, I can assure you. Yeah, not too bad at all. Quite like it really. Single pot pal calipers on the back. This there. These are twin pots, I presume. These are twin pots on the back on the front, both sides. Two discs. 
obviously water cold. Yeah. I really like it. Really like it. Right, okay. That's it for now. Let's get back on it and uh, ride it to Cradley Kawasaki. See you in a bit. Right, well, welcome back. A little bit closure on this, on this little video. So as you can see, I'm back on Kramer now, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is a marked difference, but of course it would be. Why wouldn't it be? As far as handling and weight and throttle and all the other bits and pieces, and obviously the smoothness of the engine. So yeah, so uh, just to just to go over what they've done or what what the problem was initially on the on Kraber was that it would it would have difficulty indicating neutral when you put it in neutral, it'd flicker and go off, um, and also I thought maybe there was an issue with the uh, side stands sensor switch so so what they've done is they basically took it out for a test ride couldn't find anything wrong with it which I knew that would be the case to be honest uh, couldn't find anything wrong with it um, then brought it back to the workshop to see if they could uh, and then basically just went through basic sort of like checks on it uh, around where the um, neutral neutral gear stroke light sensor is and the uh, the plug for the and the plug and it where it plugs in the connectors um, and also where the side stand sensor connections are so <coughs> they did all that checked they just basically checked the continuity to make sure that the switches were all working properly they did find an issue, well not an issue, but slight corrosion on the neutral light sensor which they said is, you know, it's not common but it, it's going to be what it is, the position where it is so it was a little bit corroded so they sort of like did a, bit, a quick clean up um, so we see because where it is, you know, it does get all the crud and and stuff kicked up underneath and what have you so So they've checked all that, cleaned it up, put some put some grease on it and what have you, just to make sure that it keeps clean. Um, then they took it out for another test ride, or oh, they 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 put it on the old diagnostic machine, see if there was any errors, even though there was no engine management light on. See if there was any errors, um, and obviously it didn't throw up anything. And uh, so yeah, took it out for another test ride. Didn't find any issues with it. So touch wood. That might have solved the very minor problem with it. But I say it's still got a, just over a month's worth of warranty left on it. So uh, Phil, there in the service department, he said, look, you know, get any other problems. If it comes back again, bring it back, and then they'll do. A bit more digging around because at the end of the day you know they could spend all day on it stripping it down doing various bits and pieces and still not find a fault so which you know i, c I can appreciate that i've, I've been there I always go for the simplest simplest solutions first so yeah so hopefully fingers crossed that uh, we won't get any more issues so yeah, thanks for uh, watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, I've already done it once, but I'm going to do it again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification so you know when the next video is coming. And obviously, write any comments below. And especially, we are interested to uh, any more any other versus riders out there, um, versus thousand riders out there we've had a similar issue um, 
Maybe it's just more of an issue with the older one, because this, as I say, this is a 2016 um, Mercy, so it's like the first of the facelift versions. Um, so yeah, put a comment below if you want, if you if you've experienced similar issues, albeit very minor. And uh, as I say, comment on all the other things that I've uh, that we've talked about so far. I'll sign off now. Um, watch what you're doing, everybody. Keep it rubber side down, and I'll catch you later. TTFN. <laughs>